Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I have an unboxing to do today I'd like to share with you. I received some Amazon gift cards for Mother's Day, and so I decided I would experiment with the fountain pens. Um, at first, when I started to see people in the um, journaling community, or journaling on YouTube and so forth, I just thought, no, that is so not for me. I don't want to mess with the ink. I don't want to have to fill a pen, blah, blah, blah. Um, I just was not into that at all. But um, as with most things that I end up doing, there was something about it when I was watching somebody use their pens that made me think, you know what? That would be a fun thing to try. Like, why not? I like crafting. I like lettering. And so I thought, this is a great time with this extra Mother's Day money, so I'm not depleting um, my little mini savings account or spending, you know, the household money. It's just something that's totally for play. So I ordered two Twisbees. I got both clear, the translucent or transparent um, orange and the transparent green. And then I ordered a Lamy Safari in mango. So I tried to keep with colors that are my um, type colors that I guess you could call them. I follow this program called Dressing Your Truth or Living Your Truth and it talks all about colors and energy and how you figure out what works best for you. And so I've gotten to be very comfortable with certain kinds of colors and I generally seek those out first. Um, I want to show you the inks. I got this Noodler's ink made in the U.S. Um, which is one reason I wanted to try this. I wanted to support a company in the country that I live in and they say that everything they make is from the bottle to the cap to the ink is produced in the United States and it's in there super tight um, okay I'm gonna go back to that in just a second uh, the other one I got was this fountain ink by diamine or diamine and excuse the dirty fingernails I was doing some stuff with stamping ink yesterday and it didn't wash out very well. This is sepia. So what I got was this color marine and this color sepia. And as you can see, sort of see, because I can't get this out of the box at the moment, um, this is quite a bit more and I don't remember what I paid for them both. I'll have to look up my Amazon orders and compare for future reference. The thing that drew me to the diamine brand. Um, it's made in, I think it said England, and I like all things English. Um, and I also liked that they were a company that has been around for, I think it was a hundred plus years. So that says to me that they have a quality product. Um, and I also liked and felt like it was it would be a good ink to try because it said it was good for all kinds of fountain pens. <clears throat> so that's the diamine sepia and then why in the word there we go that's just really in there snugly they have really creative bottles I've heard and read quite a bit about the noodlers ink I'm not an expert but I, I was reading up on it and they're pretty creative so the green marine this is a glass bottle this is plastic um, this sepia is 30 mill 30 milliliters and I have no idea what this one is. I don't think it says on there. Let's check the box. I Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to check my orders. So quite a difference. Um, one, oh, three ounces. It's right in front of me. So yeah, that's a big difference. I do like greens. This is green marine after the marines, um, I guess. It has that Semper Fidelis but it also has a catfish, so I'm sure there's more to this than I realize. Um, somebody had commented on YouTube that an advantage of a smaller bottle is that you can try more inks. The larger one you may be at for a long time, and maybe you would get tired of it and still have so much ink left. I don't know if that would be the case, so I did limit myself to two inks until I get more comfortable with this fountain pen journey. I put a plastic vinyl thing placemat here. I'm gonna scoot other stuff off my work area. Um, just I like the the wood background, but I was afraid of getting too much ink spilt on it as I play around with this the first time. 
Let me put some paper towels back there to catch any things. So anyway, I did go ahead and open these. I haven't taken anything out. So we'll see which one is first. I've watched several unboxings with the uh, inks, I mean with the pens. So there, it's got a little cardboard case around it. Comes in a kind of a plastic, but oh yeah, I remember somebody struggling with this too. Of course, that would be my situation as I'm trying to film. Gosh. The moral of the story really is try things out before you turn on your phone camera. Oh yeah, I remember someone did the same thing. So I'm setting aside my labels to put in my little junk journal. So it's because I like to commemorate like everything. There we go. Not so bad. Eco, echo, however you say it. I know there's this wrench, there's silicone grease, there's instructions. Um, I am not going to mess with any of that right now because I just want to get to the pen. It's packaged very nicely though as you can see so you could definitely keep it in this case. We we'll keep it secure. It's a perfect place for it. It's a great way to ship it. It looks like it's arrived just fine. And so um, they're saying not to use alcohol to clean it with somebody commented on that. I think this is really pretty. Um, it's not as deep as an emerald, but maybe you could call it emerald green. I don't know. I just think it's beautiful though. I, I was really drawn to this clear, this is called a demonstrator, and I guess that comes from that it demonstrates or shows you how much ink you have. This is the piston um, filler and to the best of my understanding, let me see. Okay, so I'm twisting it towards me to build up like the vacuum kind of, and then I'll dip that in the ink and then pull it away. It almost wants to go by itself. And then that should fill with ink. I've also seen several sites say to push it down and pull it back up to get out air bubbles and make sure you get a full cartridge thing here or barrel. I'm sure there's a name, I don't remember. And then these twist off. <clears throat> um, there's the nib. And I'm trying to see if there's a glare, hopefully not. I ordered a broad and I ordered a medium nib because I prefer a wider stroke. I've never been super fond of fine tip pens. I feel like my writing looks better with a broader nib. So that's what I got to experiment with first and the Lamy Safari that I purchased that will be here, I don't know when, in a few days or week or so. That is also medium because I just think I'm going to like those better. And I know there's a big difference on what kind of paper you use with these. Um, so I kind of bought this just because I wanted to try out a new little hobby. I'm noticing the Disney logo there, and it is on that one too. I just didn't open it the right way. This will be my orange one then. Now I know I need to take this off. See, it's got the little color dot there. And it had that on this one too. So why is that important? Not really a reason, except I think that'll be fun to stick in my little journal to show the color pens. I did start, let me show you real quick before we get further. I made this little book. Um, I got one of those Dymo label makers from Mother's Day as well from my youngest daughter. And so I thought it'd be fun to label some things. So I have this little book set up with, as you can see, these mason jar looking stamps. And what I want to do is put samples of the ink as I get them. So the what will be the maker and the when will be when I got the ink. And I thought that might be helpful so I can 
if I forget if I have a couple different shades of green I can be like oh that was the first green I bought or whatever so the order will help me with that kind of organization in my mind and then on these little labels that I stamped on I'm going to put the name so sepia for example or green marine it's kind of showing through so I don't know if I'll be able to stick with this system or if I'll just have to do like every other page but I had this laying around I haven't been using it and I've probably had it for a year so I thought it would be a good test area and this is relatively smooth paper um, I think it came with a little pocket size TN that I got I'm really digressing here I think it came with this little set so no this is my chic sparrow I have another smaller one um, let me get it the field notes size uh, this one came with a little set of things so I was thinking this might be a good little place to keep any ink information so that's where I'll do some testing I don't know what kind of paper this is if it's that MD paper pretty sure it's not Tomoe River in fact I would say it's not I don't have any really high quality paper I generally journal in travelers notebook inserts so we'll just play around see if there's too much feathering or whatever we'll try try another option there we go let's kind of just stick just a little and here is the orange one with all the silicone grease and the wrench which is here if you need to uh, add some lubricant there or for cleaning set that off to the side for now and this one is really pretty too so there I have orange and green they're kind of St. Patrick's Day colors a little late I like them both I don't know if I'll have a favorite but my thought will be to put the brown in here the brown and the orange or the sepia will be a similar tone and of course the green and the green will help me remember which ink is in which I love the feel of these there they feel pretty light um, they feel substantial as far as the uh, size to them there's the little logo thing on the end the Twisby logo some people have commented that they really like how that looks in the different colors and others don't like the red with all the different colors I think I definitely like it better with the green but it doesn't really matter to me and it does have this pen hook that I somebody commented is a little bit hard to get under there but once you do it's got some flexibility so when you loop it through something it will be secure so I don't know I don't know what to start with I have watched a lot of videos of this and I'm hoping I don't make a big inky 100% mess let me grab my wipes here I think it'd be a very smart idea to have that a couple of those handy I'm not too worried about my hands getting inky but I don't want to totally stain my surface here okay so let's just start with the green since that's the first one I opened it's really full I have read reviews that have said be super careful see I already splattered a little bit there I really spread and wipe it up that's just a little tiny dot that um, this ink is really full so that is fine just be aware of it um, and I do appreciate getting a product that is full unlike the potato chip bags right my kids always complain about that <laughs> like well if they were cram packed your chips would all be in pieces but okay so oh you know what I'm still not sure which nib is which let's see if it's on the label real quick okay so my orange one is the medium it's on that little tag that was on the end of the box so I couldn't remember which was which and my green this one here um, what, what do you call that color green I'm curious of how you would identify that is that an emerald green 
Is it more of a Kelly green, more of what you'd call a spring green? You know, it's more bright and vibrant, even though it's a deeper version of that. Anyway, I'm just curious, uh, other than green, if anybody has any thoughts on how you would identify that green over, over another green. So let's bring this down. Now what they have said to do is to dip the nib, like that whole front piece. I know they have names, I haven't learned all the names of all the parts yet, although I have watched several videos. I need to commit those to memory, but this all will be dipped in there. I think you want to get this feed thing pretty much immer immersed. Is that the right word? In the ink. So that's all the further that goes. So I don't want to mess with that. And I want to make sure this is steady here. I'm going to slide it up because it seems like there's a little bit of a bubble in this placemat. Okay, I know that from this angle you can't see it, but I'm going to dip the ink up to, not the ink, but the nib into the ink up to here. And then I'm going to screw the piston back the opposite way so that it's retreating again. And I'll probably do that a couple times because I've seen that suggested in order to work out any air bubbles and to get a full barrel there of ink. That's probably not the right word, like I said. But let's let's try this and see, and we'll just... By the way, I do have an apron on <laughs> in case it splatters. I always get stuff on my clothes. I have learned it pays to wear an apron. Okay, so... Got it dipped. It is drawing up ink. A little bit of it kind of squirted, but it's still in the thing. Okay, now I'm going to push it back down. The idea of working out any air bubbles that might be in there. Go down as far as it'll let me go which is now to the bottom. Uh, somebody else said to do it nice and slow. I am seeing a lot of air bubbles, so I'm gonna push it back down again. They just look like little white dots in there. Try bringing this up a little more slowly and see if we can get it a little more full of the green marine ink. From what I can tell, this is going to be a really neat ink. You know, you see it on Amazon or whatever site you're going to, and sometimes I just think it's hard to tell exactly what you're getting. It looks to me like there are still quite a few air bubbles. That's very interesting to me. Okay, um, but I think I want to... Okay, you know what? For the sake of boring you to death, let's put this back down in there one last time. I think the slower draw up of the ink is definitely helping with getting a full barrel there. All right, this now I'm twisting it clockwise and I have the nib fully immersed and I'm drawing up ink into the demonstrator area. Whatever the proper term is, I'm sure I'll learn it. Comment below if you wish, but I I will just look that up when I'm done here today. Okay, I'm just shaking it off and I've seen people just do this just to clean off the nib. It is interesting how much that spreads as it gets onto a surface. I want to look up on these inks too and put in my little book that I showed you um, what qualities each, each ink has. So I know some are 
meant to be uh, waterproof, some are meant to be like security type inks and so forth. I think it would be really interesting to keep a record of that. Um, I'm going to grab another paper towel. Just make sure I have the outside of that wiped off. But, you know, my fingers already have ink. My husband was like, that's great if you want to do that hobby. And I, I told him, maybe it's a hobby we could develop together. And he's like, well, maybe, but go for it. I'm not sure I want to mess with it. But I think if I gave him one filled up, he might like it. So let's use this little thing. Um, I was thinking down here I could put a little sample of writing. Of course, it's going to be really bad because, or questionable, because I've never written with this before. But let's see. And I'm a lefty, but I am an underwriter, not an overhook hand writer. So I'll just do the name of the ink. Ooh, that is super, super fun. Oh my gosh, it just glides on. One thing I was interested in with the inks, why I bought the sepia at least, I don't know, I can't remember what I read about this Noodler's Green Marine, but with the sepia, one of the things is it has shading. So depending on how you write, or with the upstroke or downstroke or whatever, you will get different shading, different dimensions to each letter. So Noodler's Ink. green marine and this was the broad nib. I really like the flow of ink and I love how this looks. It's so much fun. It's so cool. One word of caution uh, in one of the videos I was watching is to not mess with this lid while you're using it. If you loosen it up that can like spray or lose ink but this is designed to go on here and they call it posting it it just snaps on so I think when you take that off you need to just be careful not to twist around with it too much so yeah there are some things to be aware of so broad nib green marine noodlers ink I could write that all in here but just for fun let's fill in a little bit of green in this little sample area. This just kind of makes me think of a, a standard green. It definitely has that like military green look to it. Almost makes me think of the little green um, army men my brother used to have, but like not quite as mossy green as those were. I guess it depends on the plastic because we had some that were different shades, but they were all green but yeah it's like a good a good deep green and so I'll fill that in because I could use the ink so what is obviously it's ink but that's the only stamp I had that kind of worked so it's noodlers and the date is Zero five seventeen and my fingers are a bit of a mess. I'm not sure at what point I'm getting that on my fingers. But somebody said that's, whoops, sorry, I knocked my phone there. Somebody said that's part of the journey, learning to have inky fingers. So you can see that. I can see a little bit of shading with my word ink. Um, this is the broad nib. It doesn't feel real broad to me. I definitely like this bolder um, ink being on the paper. It's going to be really fun. So part of what I wanted to do with these was when I uh, correspond with people, when I send birthday cards or anniversary cards, I can use a fun ink. Um, journaling, I'll have to play around with it on some of my journal pages is similar to this but a little smoother I think um, anyway so that's that one let's see if I can get it off without causing an explosion okay 
so far so good. They aim towards the paper towel. And then you do have to remember to twist it on. It's not a pull-off cap. I do love that. I think this is going to be really fun. I just have to get kind of comfortable with using the ink and playing around with that. So let's see about this one. I feel like I want to shake these like you do when you get bottles of things, but I don't think you're supposed to. So um, this, like I said, is plastic, not a big deal, but I do prefer the glass. So, but I don't think that would keep me from buying an ink. I just, um, oh yeah, I just said twist it off and I'm pulling. This is a really pretty orange. Okay, again, I guess that's, I'm not sure which direction I'm going, but I'm, I'm pointing to the left and bringing it towards me to draw up the ink. I'm going to go away from me, which I guess would be more of a clockwise movement. I'm a little bit more leery of this lighter weight bottle, like I'm going to tip it, and believe me, if somebody's going to do that, it's going to be me. So... Tipping the nib all the way in. This one isn't quite as full, um, which is fine, but just an observation. It doesn't, it's a little bit harder for me to see how far down I'm going because it's not at the top. And I'm going to go clockwise just a little. Now I'm going back down to push out any ink and air bubbles. Drawing it up again, turning it clockwise. Now I'm going to push that out. I think they say it's called flushing. I'm going to flush that back out. I'm seeing some air bubbles, I think. All right, now this is going to be the last time. Twisting it counterclockwise. Trying to remember to go slow. I know that's a key element. Okay, so on, it's pretty full. I feel like it should be a little more full. But that's all the further that the um, piston device is letting me go. So we'll stop, obviously, with that. <clears throat> My voice has been <clears throat> like a frog in it frog in your throat kind of thing. This whole season, I always want to tell people, don't worry, I'm not sick. I just, I'm bothered by allergies. Okay, so this sepia is coming out as a burnt orange on the wipe, of course. That's not paper. I'm going to grab a paper towel here that I have ready and just, so as you touch it, it's really cool. It just comes, comes down and you can see the ink all the way down into here too, hopefully. I probably, I'm hoping I don't have too much of a glare. I have a lamp that's right above here. Sometimes it works really well and other times I feel like it's not so helpful. <clears throat> okay, so let's try writing with this one. Now this is the medium. This was the broad, this is the medium. I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm going to call it different it is a different ink. So this is diamine, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Diamine ink. Sepia. And medium nib. So, yeah, I can see darker and lighter elements based on how I'm writing, which is a fun feature. I like this color a lot. It On this cream paper, it has a, um, oh, sepia is a great way to call it, really, but to give it another word, um, kind of caramely, uh, a golden brown, maybe a light golden brown. 
both would be good. I think I'm kind of maybe preferring this color for more everyday stuff. I'm a fan of green. This might be more um, greeny than I want, like <clears throat> your traditional green, say, versus a uh, mossy green or an olive green or a, I don't know. Probably not my number one choice of ink, but not a bad ink, but I think I'm drawn more to this color. I don't know enough to have a strong opinion about the inks yet, but I'm really liking a little bit more this diamine one. I'll have to try a different a different noodlers. Both both of these inks seem to be operating similarly similarly to me, but this is such a saturated color. I don't know if I'd want to do a lot of writing in that. It'd be good for a journal, maybe not as much writing to somebody. Um, so the brand or the what is diamine. And again, 051720. These were uh, really pretty easy to fill. I would not have known what I was doing if I hadn't have watched all those videos. There is the handy thing that comes with these called instructions. So if I wanted to study the instructions, I'm sure they would be fine and I could figure it out. Um, I tend to like learning through watching others do things. So for me to have watched several videos on filling these really helped me today to feel ready to try out these inks. And I think I'll definitely um, mess around with them, try some lettering with them. As far as the nibs go, I'm not sensing a huge difference between the broad and the medium nib. I mean, it, I guess you could say it looks slightly wider here, but it's a very small difference. And I was going to put the name of the ink there. I'll go back with my Sharpie and do that probably. Um, so that's good. I'm glad I got the broader ones. And like I said, my Lamy will be a medium nib as well. So that will be fun to compare that. I think my draw to these um, in my limited knowledge and experience and so forth is that I, I like the look. I like seeing that ink. That is such a cool element to me. And I definitely will watch and read up on these so I become more informed on this new little quest, this new little hobby. While I have you, I just want to briefly share with you this um, couple things I got for Mother's Day too was this wax stamp. I bought uh, wax little bead things a while back and this is a clock, like an old-fashioned clock with the gears, which I love that look. I love the sealing wax. It reminds me of my childhood. That was the thing the cool kids had. You know? So, of course, I had to have it. I've always loved paper, stationery, writing, the written word. Um, so this, is this I felt like, was the next step for me in developing my knowledge and expertise. And if anybody can share with me a site that explains paper sizes and paper weights, I feel very uninformed in that. I know the heavy, higher the number, the heavier the paper. I'm curious as how that would affect inks and just more of an explanation of that. Um, I haven't searched it a whole lot, but I would love to know more about that. And then my daughter gave this to me for Mother's Day. I have three daughters. My middle daughter gave this to me. I love the terracotta or maybe clay color inside and she just had come across it and picked it up for me but I thought I should make sure these bottles are clean that this would be a fun place to keep my inks now if I get a big collection that won't work but I kind of like that they're also kind of different and unique with the labels so if I can find a spot they might be fun to display as well so anyway, I thought that was super cool. I mean, she gave it to me and I liked it. I liked the design and the colors. I was thinking, hmm, I wonder what I can use that for. And then when I started getting into this, I'm like, yes, 
I know that'll be a good spot for inks or also for the sealing wax things. So, um, there you go. Oh, I want to show you one more thing. Another Mother's Day present from my oldest daughter was this pencil pouch, which I did want. I do like this um, kind of fabric. This is from This Loves That Etsy shop. And there's a name for this company that produces these flowers, and it escapes me at the moment. I was thinking I wanted a pencil pouch to put in my new leather bag to carry. And just keep my writing utensils separate so I could find them. But now I'm not so sure I want to use it for that. And I thought maybe it would be fun to keep the fountain pens in there. But then I thought, okay, if these leak, I mean, I know they're not supposed to. If you do it right, it's not supposed to be a problem. But if it would happen to break, I don't think I want to get this covered with ink. So I'm still thinking on how to use this, but I love this fabric. I think it is just beautiful, and I love the design of the flowers. So anyway, there you go. That is my little show and tell for you today. Hope that was fun to watch. This is a new venture for me. I do not in any way, shape, or form claim to be an expert. I am repeating what I have learned by watching others. So it's kind of a watch and learn along with me thing, but I, I do like this idea. Let's see how much that leaked. Actually, I think it'll be okay. So I'll probably continue on with this format until something else comes up. I'd seen a stamp from an Etsy vendor that you could stamp an ink jar and then fill it in, but the weight on it was super long. It was like $7, and then it's like another $5 shipping, and if I just can't justify buying a stamp when I already had something that would be cute enough to do. So that's what I have. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.